A linear equation is any equation where you have the form y equals mx plus b. And there's a few things that each of these represent. x and y are just your values that go into a graph. Uh, m is what's called the slope of a line, a line, and b is what's called the y-intercept. So you can think of b as where the line is crossing the y-axis, and you can think of the slope as being uh, rise over run, or in other words, the ratio of how tall it gets versus how far it goes. So I'd like to show an example here. y is equal to 2x plus 2. So what we can do is we can make a little chart of x and y values for graphing. So we're going to choose x is equal to negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So to figure out our y values, we simply substitute in the number in x into the equation. So for example, for the first one with y, we're going to get 2 times negative 2 plus 2. This gives us negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. With x equals 1, we're going to get 2 times negative 1 plus 2, which is negative 2 plus 2, which gives us 0. For x equals 0, we'll get 2 times 0 plus 2, which is 0 plus 2, which is 2. And we can see a nice little pattern here. So when x equals 1, y will equal 4. And when x equals 2, y is equal to 6. So if we take a look at our little graph here, our little table, we're going to notice something. And that is when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2. So this corresponds to our y-intercept. Basically, when x is equal to 0, where is it going to be crossing that y-axis? And the other thing that we see here, which is pretty nice, is our slope. So our slope is 2. And this is telling us, as we go up each step, we're going to be going up 2 in the y-direction whenever we go up one in the x direction. In other words, there's this ratio for every um, one x that we have, we're going up to y. So if we were to plot this with points, well, now what we can do is we can say, okay, we're gonna have the first row corresponds to a point, negative two, negative two. The second point corresponds to negative one, zero. The third point is gonna correspond to zero, two. We're going to have 1, 4, and 2, 6. So we can plot all of these. There's negative 2, 2. There's negative 1, 0. There's 0, 2. This is going to be 1, 4. And this is going to be 2, 6. So if we take a line tool, we should be able to connect all of these points here. I think I did a pretty good job, but there we go. This would be our line. So in other words, what we can see here from point to point is the slope. This is going up two for every one over. And then here we have where we're crossing the y-axis. So this is what we call our y-intercept. And we don't need to graph this to figure this out. We can simply look at the equation. So all the problems we do today are gonna to be basically about how to graph these lines and finding these things. So our first question is to graph the line f of x is equal to 1 half x minus 6. Don't be afraid, f of x in this case is the same thing as y. What we know is we have our slope being 1 half. This means that for every 2 in the x direction, we're going to go up 1 y. So this is our little ratio here. And our negative 6 is going to tell us where it crosses the y-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We know there's going to be a point down there at 0, negative 6. So we could find some values here, or we could make use of our slope. So let's just do both. Uh, using our slope of 1 half, we know that whenever we go up 1, so from negative 6 to negative 5, we have to go over 2 in the x direction. So that would put the next point, if this is 0, negative 6, that would put this point as uh, we're going 2 to the right, and this would be negative 5. So if we do it again, well, we're going to go uh, 2 to the right, which is 4, and then 1 up, which is negative 4. 
So we should see a line that goes a little bit like this. Let me just turn off the snapping tool here so we can do whatever angle we want. So it should look something like this. And that would also continue on forever. But just to verify, let's check by making a little chart. So uh, if we put in x at, let's do 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So if we put x with 0, we're going to get 1 half times 0. And we're going to subtract 6, which should give us negative 6. So one point we have is 0, negative 6. Uh, we can do 1 half times 2 minus 6. This will give us 1 minus 6, which is negative 5. So we should have the point 2, negative 5. We have 4. 1 half times 4 is 2 minus 6. This should give us negative 4. So we should have a point 4, negative 4, which means if we continue this pattern, we should be seeing something like this. And finally, at x is equal to 12, we get 0. So if this graph was a little bit more balanced, this isn't the most perfect graph, uh, what we'd see in this one is that we have about 10 values on our x-axis. So it would look a little bit more like that if the graph was perfect. Crossing at this point right here, which would be 12 and 0. So this one wasn't too bad. Let's try another. Graph the line equals, uh, so 0 equals 3x plus 2y. So if we have something like this, we want to convert it into this form y equals mx plus b. So what we're going to do is we're going to isolate the y. So 2y is equal to negative 3x. We're just moving the 3x to the other side. And then we're going to divide by 2. So y is a equal to negative 3 half x, and there's no b here. So you can think of this as being like plus 0. So on this graph, we're going to cross at the origin 0, 0. So what this is saying in this case, because we have a negative 3 over 2 slope, what this is saying is that whenever we go 2, in the right direction, so in the x direction, we're going to go three spaces down. So a negative slope is going to give us a negative line. In other words, it's going to go from top left to bottom right. So we can do some values here. Usually we just do a few points. We don't do too many. So I know we're going to get 0, 0 from this. So let's do, say, a line with 2 and a line with negative 2 for our x values. So if x is 2, we're going to get negative 3 halves times 2. So that's going to be negative 6 divided by 2, which gives us negative 3. So one of the points that we're going to have is 2, negative 3, which is exactly what we would expect from our slope there. So this is 2, negative 3, which means if we do negative 2, what we should be expecting here is the point negative 2, 3, since we'd be going left 2 and then up 3. So let's check to see that this works. So negative 3 over 2 times negative 2, that's going to give us 6 over 2, which is 3. So yeah, what would happen is we're going to get a nice line that looks a little bit like this. So with this problem, we just had to isolate y to get our equation. And it just so happens we didn't have a b value here, so it crosses at the origin. Now, let's do a slightly different question. We're given two points, and now we have to find a slope. So let's graph this. We have negative 3 and 4. That's going to put this point right here. And then we have the point 2, negative 8. So this is about right here, 2 and negative 8. So we want to find the slope of this. Now what we know about slope is that this is going to be rise over run. So you can think of this as a change in y over a change in x. So this could be the y value of 0.2 minus the y value of 0.1 divided by 
the value of x2 minus x1. So this is going to be our point 2, and our top left point is going to be our point 1. So in other words, we can label these as like x2, y2, and this first point would be x1, y1. So if we put our values in, we're going to find that we get negative 8 minus 4, because negative 8 comes from our second y value and 4 comes from our first y value. And then for our bottom, our x2 minus x1, we're going to get 2 minus negative 3. So if we just do the math with this, we're going to get negative 12 on top, we're going to get 5 on the bottom. So we know that our slope is going to be negative 12 over 5. And if we were to draw a line through these two points, we would get something like this. So the slope here is pretty harsh. If we were to sort of draw this in here, basically what we're saying is that for every five that we go in the x direction to the right, we're going to go 12 down in the y direction, which is exactly what we get here. So here we have two points and we're able to find this line. So uh, if we wanted to, we could graph this, but that is not part of the question. So we'll go to the next one. And by graph, I mean we could find the equation for it. So plot two points on the line through negative 1, 3, where m is equal to 3 over 2. Okay, so here we're given a point and a slope. And now we need to find two more points. So we start at negative 1, 3. And we're told that our slope is equal to 3 over 2. So this means that we're going to go 3 up, 2 to the right. So if this is happening for every 2 that we go right, so let's do from negative 1, 3, we go to the point x equals 1, and then we're going to go up 3. So what we're going to end at is negative 1 plus 2, which is 1, and then 3 plus 3, which is 6. So we went up 3 and right 2. So there's one point we have. Uh, we could do another point. Let's go in the other direction. So this would say for every two points to the left, so every two x values to the left, we're going to go down 3. And that would point us at this bit right here, which would be, well, negative 3, because we went 2 left, and then 3 minus 3 would be 0, because we're going down 2. So if we keep doing this, what we're going to get is a nice little slope of our line here. So it should look something like this. And we could find more points based on where we are in the line. So uh, that's it for this video on linear equations. We went through quite a few different problem types. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, all that fun stuff. And see you in the next one.